Nikki, recently you've been kind of um, doing some work with companies that are kind of coming back post COVID. Is there is there anything that's been cropping up in your world that that is kind of the potential start of a myth that's kind of growing? That you, in your opinion, I think what's been interesting is I tend to work um, with people and do programs, right. management development programs, rather than one hit wonders. And they're very um, good programs, just upselling. Here we go. They're very good <laughs> programs. I love them. Thank you very much. But within those programs, there's there's usually a lot more time at the beginning to do the preamble to find out what's really bothering people, and you get you know, whereas when it's a one day thing, you kind of get in there and get running quite it's a hit, quickly. isn't it? You kind of, yeah. yeah. So, so what's been cropping up as you've been engaging on that longer term, longer term stuff with people? So what what I found is that when I've kind of gone through what we're going to go through over the, the agenda of of the program, and then I usually get them to do some kind of activity normally using Lego, um, that, that, that involves them talking about what they want to get from the program or where they feel their development areas is. The thing that crops up time and time again that doesn't come up as um, an agenda heading as such is confidence. Okay, can you tell me what, what, what you mean by that? Confidence. Yeah, sure. So mo- for most people, particularly if they're new to role, they are uncertain about their role or how to manage people or whether they're that kind of imposter syndrome of well I'm here I've got the title I'm being paid more but you know how do I do that Mm. so excuse me with I think with most people they feel as though they have to be outwardly confident so the myth if we were to kind of define it Name would, the myth. Name it. <laughs> Name it. Uh, would be something like, I have to be a. I'm, I'm hesitating because I want to say externally confident person, as in I have to show confidence. So I have to be a confident person in order to be a good line manager. But right. the, but that confidence bit for them when you dive down into it is it's that kind of um, uh, extrovert personality okay, so, 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 so what you're saying is that people are saying the myth is i need to be a confident person to 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 manage or to lead well yeah or uh, actually it might not be confidence at, uh, at all it might be what, what what exactly what i've just said i need to be an extrovert to be a really good line manager well why, why, why don't we just take a few moments to kind of peel beneath those layers and, and see, Ooh, what's, see what's what's <laughs> we'll see what's there it's like it's like shrek isn't it the donkey says like onions get layers, <laughs> yes. isn't it? there's a layer there. i mean i think you've hit on a really interesting layer there around around the whole the whole kind of if you like the preconceived mindset of what it means to be a leader or a manager yeah and 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 therefore one of the things we pick up is straight away you need to be confident which suddenly leads to extrovert straight away mm. so you know i want to what, what so what do you think about the difference between being confident at your role and being an extrovert is all about so i think new managers will see people who are naturally extrovert so um they're usually the louder people so they're 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 saying what's on their mind um they're usually engaging other people in what's happening around them um and so for somebody on the outside looking in that extroversion means they can physically see what's happening what they are doing Mm. um and (laughs) sometimes that'll work in the favor and sometimes it won't but ultimately when things go right an extroverted person will have talked through their process they will have been talking about it that they will talk about it in terms of their successes so it feels like extroverted people feel more confident in what they're doing because they're expressing it externally yeah and and it can also appear that they're rewarded that way aren't they so you know, the rewards cover, you know that person's doing well they're like that yeah yeah so, so yeah i mean think about it right you're in a you're in a meeting with all the managers together and yeah. um and somebody says something you know uh, we, we've got an issue with this and we need to do it and one of the managers who's an external thinker shouts out a solution they get heard it gets talked about while there's somebody who could be just as confident as them but who is an internal thinker who's more introverted will be problem solving but yeah. by the time they've problem solved yeah. you know the, the the person who's the loudest has got heard and, and they're running with that stream so it can be quite frustrating in that way 
So I, I don't agree with the fact that extroverted managers make the best managers. Uh, I, what I agree with is the whole, you have to be confident in where you are mm. and your own personality and your own preferences and how you deal with that in order to be a better manager. But as you know, if, if I was an internal thinker, which we both know, I'm not. And I'm also not. You. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence the reason why we're just you know chatting and recording um but if i was an internal thinker i was new to management and i was thinking well how do i get my voice across i think you, you're absolutely right in terms of asking for an agenda up front what are we going to be talking about because i might need some reflective time to think about that but also you can you can verbalize placeholders so you you can still have your say but not say what you might want to say once you've had a chance to think about it. So if somebody says, yeah, what ideas have you got? You can, you know, just, just <laughs> you don't have to put your hand up, um, but, but you can say, I've probably got an idea about this. It, it's brewing, but it's not going to be ready for this meeting. Can I come back and talk to you about it? Yeah, and I'm that way you just put in your stake in the sand. Do you, need, do you need instant answers or is this something maybe we need by, you know, can we set a time frame kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and if it is something that's urgent, then obviously you, know, you, you need to work out a way of getting that by the deadline. But most of these things kind of cross over from meeting to meeting. Mm. So, um, you know, you, you can say, can you put me on the agenda for the next meeting so I can talk about my thoughts mm. uh, about this? So that there are lots of ways of doing it. From what you're saying, that's kind of making me think, actually, you know, the myth about being confident, sometimes it's that maybe that inner confidence to maybe to analyze the situation yeah. to get what's best out of it. It's, it's be confident what you're doing, but, but not the external extrovert confidence. Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. And I think that when you're able to talk about that openly with new managers or existing, you know, the experienced managers um, who have felt that for a long time, it's almost like you're, you're giving them permission to say it's, it's okay to be a more reserved, more quieter manager. In fact, what I tend to find is that those people, um, once they have more experience and, and more confidence, that, that they pull on other people around them in yeah. order to make, make things happen. So, yes, I think our myth about, <laughs> what was it we said? Um, I need to be a confident, brackets, extroverted manager, uh, person in order to be a great manager is is not true but we need to understand what those elements are underneath it in order and, 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 to uh, work out how to make that yeah and i think and i think there's something about reassuring people that your personality and who you are with the skills and things that you've got and what's required you know the requirement of an extrovert leader team leader or a introverted one or, or however you want to talk about their people's personalities because that's what we're talking about yeah you know that, that actually people have different personality traits and different styles which can actually be really, really useful in an organization so Absolutely. i know when i've worked in teams there was someone who was always would, would appear to be what some people might call an ornament just on the shelf do you know what i mean <laughs> but what they were able to do in terms of talking with other people and making sure just just on a kind of team level that people were included. Yeah, they were a very thoughtful and deep person. So, so the one to one conversations that they'd have outside of the in a meeting, you wouldn't think they were contributing anything. And yet to the team. So, so I think one of the things is, I, you know, maybe how we evaluate people's worth within a team needs to kind of take place in that one-to-one -one with you as a team leader so you start to get to know them about what makes them tick yeah and then and then in that kind of larger meeting setting it's trying to make sure you can draw out those strengths really for the benefit of it but that's an awesome myth I'm fantastic yeah fun good good that was nice i like that one <laughs> myth busted let's have some more <laughs>